Coming up on Tech News Today, Microsoft takes on the Ruskies while simultaneously fixing Adobe's problems. They're amazing. Also, gamers are faster, and we can prove it with science. And don't friend robbers. It's not a good idea. We'll tell you why. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Monday, September 13th, 2010. Tech News Today is brought to you by Slurm. Enjoy Slurm, it's highly addictive. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Darren Kitchen. And I'm running out of ideas for sponsors. <laughs> I'm behind the boards, our excellent producer, Eric Lanigan. Hey, guys. How are you? Doing good, man. This is the show where we kick around the tech news of the day, hence the name, Tech News Today. The today part is not optional. It's no. happening It right is essential now. Yes. to the name uh, and to the show. So let's start with Microsoft versus the Ruskies. Uh, looks like, uh, first of all, Microsoft was reported to be cooperating with the Russian government in piracy investigations targeted against political opponents. So these are people who are supposedly speaking out against the Russian government or planning some sort of an awareness, uh, yeah. in something, and all of a sudden they're getting their computers confiscated because supposedly they're pirating in Microsoft. Uh, yeah, software. Transparency International uh, and Russian human rights groups uh, are claiming that certain private lawyers representing Microsoft were involved in corruption schemes. Uh, they said they had received dozens of reports where Russian officials allegedly worked with lawyers from Microsoft to seize computers uh, and claimed that they had found Microsoft software. Now, Microsoft has now put out an announcement saying that they absolutely oppose this practice uh, and they prohibit their Russian division from taking part in piracy cases against government opponents and declared that they would thwart any attempt by the authorities uh, to use such inquiries to exert political pressure. They don't think that uh, intellectual property law should be used in this way, which is good. Uh, and they even went so far as to say that they would give blanket licenses to groups like this to prevent any kind of court case from being pursued. So Microsoft is pretty much saying, listen, I mean, obviously if someone is pirating their software, then they should be going out or they they reserve the right to go after anybody but they're kind of saying listen we know that's not what's going on here yeah and so yeah if you, if you don't have a license we'll make it even easier for you to get one so that we're not uh, keeping anybody down and it sounds a little bit like somebody in the russian microsoft division was cooperating with the government and microsoft is doing their best to distance themselves definitely uh, the yeah. way that i read it the um spokesperson from microsoft kevin Colts, was being very uh very poignant in his statement to the New York Times uh, about distancing themselves from the quote-unquote contractor that was overseeing this. In Russia, Clippy clips you. Mm. Got that out of the chat room. Thanks, nice. Web3527. Da. We couldn't get through that story without a Yakov Smirnoff reference. Halo Reach comes out at midnight tonight. Which means it could be out already where you are. Because it's globally midnight, yeah. right? So it's not midnight here, but it's midnight... I don't know. In Australia, right? Right. U.S. Something. developer Bungie Somewhere. has been yeah. very successful. Uh, when Halo 3 came out, it was, at the time, the biggest selling game of all time. It's since been eclipsed by Call of Duty 2, Modern Warfare. Uh, do you think Halo Reach will retake the title for the Halo franchise? Well, are you guys going to be waiting in line at midnight tonight? No. No? no. If, I, if I try to play some Halo, I Is just that sort of answering our question, or do you think uh, that you're not, in the minority I'm not here? The right, I'm not the right guy. I'm not, I'm not really either. an FPS guy, so I'm the wrong person to ask. What about guy you? On, yeah, keyboard and mouse? FPS, let's game on. Give me a flat canner and a redeemer. I'll take you. But on a, <laughs> the sticks, no, nah, I, I can't get down with it. But, you know, I'm glad that Microsoft's got new... Uh, Halo title coming out. If it, this is the last one from Bungie as well, so it's going to be interesting to see how the franchise what happens changes. To it, yeah, uh, they said they have spent sixty percent more on marketing Halo Three than they spent, or uh, than on marketing Halo Reach than they spent on Halo Three. Interesting. So does that mean so that they're they certainly hoping it, to be it will bigger, eclipse, or were they worried? And they yeah. that that, that mm. says me that they're worried. 
I don't know. I haven't heard a whole bunch of like craziness. I remember when Halo 3 was, and maybe it was just the people that I was surrounding myself with, but it's all I heard. What year was Halo 3? Ooh, it was a couple of years ago. It wasn't, it wasn't too long ago. Uh, 2007, I want to say. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll know a lot more about this tomorrow. If you're waiting in line at midnight, let us know. Yeah. yeah. Also, send us uh, a voicemail. Let us know how the lines are. Look yeah. for deep discounts because a lot of folks are in a price war now, at least in the UK. Uh, Sainsbury's is selling what should be a 60 pound title for 35 pounds. Tesco's selling it for 28 pounds as long as you buy 17 pounds of credit for the console's online gaming network. Mm -hmm. So you can find some deals on it, which also suggests. I don't know what that suggests because it's the the retailers that are marking it down, yeah. not the not Microsoft. You know, and I've heard less. Uh, there hasn't been like that whole uh, what was it the the bees, the angry bees, or something like that. There was like this whole viral marketing campaign, and I just haven't seen that, or maybe I'm just oblivious to it. But uh, but I particularly remember with the previous Halo releases, there being just a big viral marketing blitz. Yeah, and they, well, I, the Sci-Fi Network, there you, you can't get through a half hour of any of their shows without seeing a couple Halo Reach advertisements. So I've I've definitely been exposed to the raw radiation of their marketing dollars. Ah, uh, Nikto, it was I love bees. Thank you. Who doesn't? Martin Sargent. Yes, yeah. he rages against them. Uh, YouTube <laughs> is testing new live video streaming capability this week. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, they've got four partner sites, uh, including uh, Next New Networks, uh, Young Hollywood. Rocket Boom and Howcast that are streaming some of their shows live on the internet. Who would want to do what that? What a crazy idea. I don't get it. I don't get the draw. Yeah. It's live video no, streaming. YouTube's taking the high ground here and I think it's great. <laughs> I think that, you know, they it's um you know, rather than give the tools to everyone like Justin TV and, and Ustream, uh, they are poised to make a lot of big money here, you know, uh, with their potential content partners here. And I'm just happy to see that they're starting with podcast networks like I think Next, Next to New Networks is on the list. Yep. Uh, Rocket mm -hmm. Boom are on the yep. list. These are networks that have been around for years. And Rocket Boom in particular, I know that they've been around for at least four, maybe five. So uh, that's really cool to start with that. And I could see potentially in the future this growing to more and more stuff. Whether or not we're ever going to see that for the users, I don't know. I it's don't know interesting YouTube that wants to become that. It's interesting that YouTube is doing, doing, going off on their own rather than partnering or having acquired any of the, the big names like Ustream. They've been experimenting with this for a while. They did uh, what, some stuff for the White House. and, and Yeah, E3, some. they did U2, they did live concerts. So this isn't the first time they've ever live streamed something, but it's the, part, it's the beginning of a new effort uh, to provide the tools to their content partners. And that's what you pointed out is different. They're not allowing anybody to do this. In right. fact... You know, we're sitting here at Twit going like, hey, you know, we yeah, we're, probably we're partners. Sure we're this, that. This could be kind of cool. uh, but it would be another outlet for Twit. If you're just a guy who uses Ustream, though, potentially this is not going to work for you. So you'd have to become a content partner to do it, which I think is probably smart for YouTube that they they take a different approach than, well, there's Stick'em and Justin TV and Ustream and, and several other Let's live streaming Let's not forget Chat platforms. Roulette because, chat, yeah, right? you know, YouTube just doesn't want to become Chat Roulette. How's that? You know? Exactly. That's my guess. So, it also has a ways to go. I mean, they're not uh, allowing uh, partners to archive video footage yet, which for a lot of people, especially on Ustream, some of the little tests that I've done, it's very important to have that archive footage for later if you, if you miss it live. Uh, you also can't embed streams yet. That's all stuff that has to be rolled out. And well, they keep just, saying that they're this still is in their alpha. testing phases. Yeah. yeah. And this is, this is, you know, Google saying alpha, so you know what it really means it. Because when they say beta. It's, it's also very exciting, though. You know, They're going to get it into the streaming, live video streaming game. That's just good for us. It's good for everybody. If they're going to do it this way and not, not take the, you know, the, the fire hose approach that Ustream or Justin takes, they're going to need to have some big names to attract people. And I don't mean it has to be ABC or CBS or something like that, but they're going to have to have something that makes people go, oh, I want to choose to watch YouTube right. particularly. And that's what they've done in their previous test, YouTube, the White House. Uh, this is the first time they're using internet names, uh, and yeah, I, yes and no. I don't, I don't, I don't know if this is the right way to go, but it's a two-day experiment. Yeah, it so makes a this great is alpha they, test. This is so, how they know. You know, you got content uh, producers that are willing to, you know, go the extra effort to put together the live shows for them and test out the equipment and everything. So that you know, Next New uh, tweeted not that long ago one of their shows that was that was live at the time. They said, "Well, we have got fifteen hundred people watching the live stream." Oh. So that's not that many people. 
Um, I know they've sort of been up and down a little bit today, so that might have something to do with it. But it's interesting to see what kind of numbers they're pulling in from curious people. I'm just sure wanted you, to see you what's, two what's garnered up. more. Yes, I think have. so, too. You I think? think so too. Yeah, yeah, probably. Just a guess, though. All right. Uh, we want to thank our sponsor, Slurm. It's highly addictive. Chattanooga, Tennessee <laughs> is getting one gigabit per second internet for $350 a month. That's a steal. It kind of is. Um, I don't think it is. Sort of is. Well, you can't get it anywhere else. In fact, uh, you know, to kind of get to the bottom of this, we talked to uh, Christopher Mitchell uh, about it. He actually got a chance to take a tour of this facility before they, they launched it and, and made it public and he even got to try it out. So take a listen as we talk to Chris. So Chris, uh, when did you get a chance to, to look at this installation? I think it was about three weeks ago. Okay, and, uh, and, and what did your tour consist of? Well, it's the, the standard walking around and staring at uh, lots of fibers bundled together and switches and uh, blinking lights, uh, but also throughout the, the community where they're doing uh, interesting work with uh, different partners and um, met uh, some of the people that are responsible for the network. Did you get to Both, try it? Uh, uh, yes, actually. I didn't get to try the full-on speed, but I stayed in a hotel called the Chattanooga. And it was incredible. They had the best Wi-Fi in a hotel I've ever experienced. Uh, I was on a Wi-Fi connection, and it tested at 13 by 10. Uh, so I suspect the hotel had much better wired connection, and I was just limited by the Wi-Fi. Now, are we right here? It's $350 a month for this? For one gigabit per second. Mm -hmm. for, yes, for, the, for, the top, for the fiber tier, right? Right. Well, it's all fiber. And so their bottom tier, which they compete with Comcast, so they basically adopted Comcast's uh, prices. So their lowest tier of broadband is 30 by 30 megabits per second. So it's symmetrical. Mm -hmm. And th what they've announced is a, is a new fastest tier, which is one gigabit per second uh, for those who want it. It's, it seems a little expensive, but that, that's pretty much a business <laughs> level, right? I mean, it, it's not your right. average everyday Joe that's going to grab that. Right. People say it sounds expensive, but one gigabit per second. I yeah. mean, there's a lot of cities in the United States, and I mean like most cities in the United States, where you cannot get one gigabit per second no matter who you are. And if you can, it's thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, depending on how you get it. So $350, sure, it's a lot for what we pay, but it's an insane amount for that level of connectivity. Now, it's, it's probably not easy for every city to duplicate what Chattanooga did, but if they were to try, what, what is it that made this work for Chattanooga? Well, Chattanooga has two things going for it. One is, one is a, a fiber to the home network that they've been rolling out, obviously, because you need fiber to do this sort of a network. But you're right, most cities uh, on their best days would not be able to duplicate this particular offering because Chattanooga has access to uh, much faster connection to the internet at much lower prices than most cities. And uh, that's because they lie on ancient railroads. Ancient, right? I mean, ancient for the internet age. So they've, they've uh, got a, a wealth of right-of-way, in other words? Right, they've got a wealth of they've got a wealth of people that have uh, big companies that have lots of bandwidth coming into town, and so they have a lot of competition for uh, peering and uh, mm -hmm. and for getting big you know one gigabit per second connections from multiple carriers to the internet at large. Do you expect to see this duplicated, and if so, how often? I mean, we know Google's going to try this in one lucky town. Right. Well, I think we'll see it in a, in a couple more towns popping up. We're not going to see it from any of the major commercial carriers, I would guess. Uh, you can imagine that if Verizon or, or Comcast did some sort of a special uh, community like this, that if, if they did it in Minneapolis, for instance, and I lived in St. Paul, I'd be furious because I would want it. And so for a big company, there's no real incentive for them to go all out in a single community. Uh, but some of the community fiber networks may try to duplicate this. Uh, Lafayette has an incredible network in Louisiana and they might bump it up a little bit. But I think this is going to set the mark for a while. All right, thanks, Chris. Christopher Mitchell is Director of Telecommunications as Commons Initiative at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. Uh, you can find him at newrules.org slash information or muninetworks.org. Thank you. And thanks to Chris for taking the time. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get video from him. For, so those of you watching the video podcast, that was probably a little confusing. But uh, good information about how this is being implemented but I was a little disheartened at the fact that it doesn't look like it's immediately replicable. We're not going to see this coming to San Francisco Bay Area anytime soon. Well, what do we say? Moving to Chattanooga? <laughs> Duh, I'm putting my botnet there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right? darknet. I mean, I didn't say there anything. There is no such thing. No, no such no. thing. <clears throat> what? What, Ned? 
Uh, it was interesting. Tom and I were kind of chuckling that somebody um, in the Ars Technica comments for, from an article on this story earlier said, 350 a month? That's ridiculous. That's over half of my mortgage payment. Over half? It's like, what? oh my well, goodness. Well, I'm moving where, where wow. wherever he lives. So really, yeah. I mean, the prices, depending on who you are and, and, and what you do for a living, it, you know, it's, it's all very relative. I'm paying For seven. a small business, that's yeah. pretty okay. For an individual, that's a lot of money. In yeah. the D.C. metro area, it's $700 a month for a 100 megabit symmetrical fiber line. Right. Put that into perspective. Well, and that's what he was pointing out is like, look, this isn't about like comparing it to your current six megabit per second DSL connection that you're paying $30 a month for. This is one gigabit per second, which you ju as he said, you just can't get. Yeah. At any price in many towns. That's so. great. In Hong Kong, you can get it for $26 a month. Well, yeah. So Chattanooga's got nothing on Hong Kong. Hey, Chattanooga's going to have some great new colos soon, so that's good. Uh, that, that's probably really true. Where you, could, you could seriously download a DVD in 38 seconds. Oh, my gosh. That really puts it into perspective, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, like all 4.7 gigs, like Ooh. full. Yeah, a full wow. DVD. A full like DVD. Like all the extras and everything. Uh, yeah. 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 I want, All right. I want to eat it. Uh, we will also want to eat more Wi-Fi spectrum because nom, nom, nom. we like the wireless. And the FCC looks like it's set to approve use of unlicensed airwaves for white space Internet as of September 23. Uh, white space is unused wireless generally between channels. Uh, of television broadcasting. It's not necessarily unused. Sometimes there's some bleed over, some static. So wouldn't you say that the static has a right to, to exist? Are they going to relocate the static to a camp or something? Actually, no. They have, they've been trialing this out. Uh, and they found that they can do this without interfering with the broadcast channels. So the static can find other places to live. Nice. It'll have plenty of room. Uh, Rice University has been uh, researching this, working to develop and test a custom-built networking gear, because you have to have different gear to take advantage of this. Smartphones, laptops, other devices that seamlessly switch frequencies between traditional Wi-Fi reception and the white space, uh, so you'd be able to kind of jump from one to the other. Google, Microsoft, and the town of Wilmington, North Carolina, have all been uh, conducting trials. I guess Microsoft has a huge white space hotspot available on their campus that if you have the right gear you can take advantage of uh so we'll, we'll let you know for sure on september 23rd if this gets passed but all indications are that it will uh the question after that is how many devices will implement it how widely will it be rolled out what kind of services will take advantage of it is this the sort of thing that you could buy a little third party like a MiFi or something and be able yeah, to yeah, tap yeah. into it's a wireless hard. network yeah, you'd have to it's on the devices frequency. you already have yep. yeah it's not like you get a firmware update for your current wi-fi and get right. on it but Hey, if it means Wi-Fi with greater range, that means more people using Wi-Fi. That means more packets. That's more to sniff. It I like, like fun. this whole white space thing. The possibilities. Yeah. They are endless, I guess, but <laughs> well, it seems far you got away this. Now. You got the 700 megahertz network, and that's one question: is how are how are Sprint and, or I'm sorry, Verizon and AT&T owns a bit of it too, going to react to having had to bid bid for the 700 megahertz spectrum? And then also, while right next door space. is the free white space. Yeah. The quote unquote free white space. Yeah. Yeah. The here you have worm, or the worm that gives you the porn video, uh, uh, depending on how you know it, uh, has has someone taken responsibility for this? I'm having a very 1999 moment here. Actually, I'm conflicted because I'm having like a like a 90s moment here with the fact that it's a virus or it's a worm that spreads itself by just sending itself as an attachment to all of your friends, or not really an attachment, but a link that goes to what would be a PDF. It looks like a link to a PDF, saver. but it's right. not actually, yeah. yeah. And it's like... Come on, people. I mean, seriously, 10 years has passed and we've not learned nothing. And at the same time, the author of the worm is claiming responsibility and has a like political message up on YouTube, which is, I don't know, it's it's very ghost in the shell to be watching a, com you know, a YouTube video with a computer voice. Or demon. Uh, we're not going there. Sorry. The guy uh, or, or demon known mm -hmm. as Iraq Resistance uh, says the worm was designed as a propaganda tool. He said he had not expected it to spread as broadly as it did. He, and he quote, and quotes, uh, I could smash all those infected, but I wouldn't. I hope all these people understand I am not a negative person. No, this is a good time. Yeah. I just created the virus. Who didn't see the fun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why, why are you people not seeing the fun in this mm. with your email system completely crashed? Uh, he said he's critical of the U.S. war in Iraq, uh, and he, he wanted to get that notion out there, even though... It's kind of late for that one. Maybe critical of the war in Afghanistan. Yeah. But hmm. 
That boat seems to have sailed. Maybe it took him a while for for the uh, for the botnet to, to yeah. really arm up and you know. Well, it worked, man. It accounted for about ten percent of the spam on the internet. And oh. supposedly he doesn't really have as much control as as he might claim, just due to the fact that uh, his his server's overwhelmed. Yeah, he's he's unable to control. It's gotten out of control. It sounds like he it's didn't really know that this was going to work as well as it did. Yeah, hence the YouTube video where it's like, oh my gosh, dude, sweet, I'm a nice I'm guy, a nice guy, I'm or a girl, guy. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Demon. Never mind. <clears throat> Japanese Space Agency, a.k.a. JAXA. I don't know why it's called JAXA. Is that because of the way it's spelled in Japanese? Anyway, I don't know. Uh, they've launched a rocket carrying the country's first GPS satellite into orbit. An H-2A rocket was launched from the Tanagashima Space Center carrying the satellite named Michibiki, uh, which means to lead in Japanese, and it will work with the existing GPS system. So it's it's not a new system like Michelangelo would be. This is a system that works with the existing GPS and will provide 24-hour coverage of Japan. So they get increased GPS accuracy in Japan without affecting the worldwide GPS system. Right. That's really interesting. It's, awesome. it's uh, I, I totally dug into this. It turns out it's in a, uh, a highly elliptical orbit, which means that it's over Japan for 12 hours a day, pretty much like 70 degrees right on top and everything. And that's why it's called the quasi-zenith system, because it's mostly there. The, this is the first of three satellites that are going to go up, and they hope to have it fully operational by 2013. And it will become a part of the Global Navigation Satellite System, or GNSS, which so far only Navstar, or what we in the United States call GPS is a part of, um, as far as I know, Galileo. Yes, the one, not Michelangelo, yeah, Galileo. Galileo, the one being built by uh, the EU and the European Space Agency, um, is, is supposedly not Galileo a makes a little more sense, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I get him yeah. and the Ninja Turtle the confused Vinci. all the time. Uh. Michelangelo. I'm done for the day. Anyway, no, this, cool. is, this is cool. This is good stuff. And I like the idea of, of sort of a branching out different countries being able to help out their GPS uh, and, with, and I'm, I'm totally stoked that it's all compatible. I can just imagine, yeah. you know, more and more countries putting up their own, you know, to get even more. What What's cool about this is they get even higher precision with their satellites. So I, I guess that means when their satellites are overhead. But, you know, right now it's just one. And if it hit the Wikipedia article because there's some fascinating reading about atomic clocks and crystals and cool stuff. Oh, and how that all stuff works is really yeah. fascinating. Time for the news, Fuse. At the Intel Developers Forum today, Intel announced the Sandy Bridge processors will ship in high volume starting early in 2011 in both laptop and desktop PCs. They'll be called the, quote, second generation Intel Core processors. That's catchy. Uh, and feature turbo mode, working dynamically with integrated graphics cores. It also uses DisplayPort as its monitor connection of choice. I'm thinking new Apple computers shortly after that. Hmm? Hewlett Packard announced on Monday that it has agreed to purchase security vendor ArcSight for... $1.5 billion. The deal is expected to close by the end of this year. Arclight sells a series of products for the monitor to monitor suspicious activity on corporate networks. HP hopes the service will help their customers to detect threats, understand their impact, and take corrective action. Microsoft's beginning to party with the upcoming launch of Windows Phone 7. Mm. Friday, employees held a Windows Phone Pride Parade, complete with zombies, a thriller dance, and ball pair, ball pairers carrying a giant iPhone. According mm. to the VP of mm. Communication, I can't speak today, Frank Shaw is just uh, says it's just a typical ship party where folks get to blow off some steam. But they buried the iPhone. Well, okay. Paul Bears. Now it's war. Nokia yeah. is losing one of its top VPs, Ansi Vanyoki, executive vice president and general manager of the Mobile Solutions Group and a member of Nokia's group executive board, is resigning. Uh, he was actually next in line for the CEO job. So I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. Uh, the company said that Vanyoki will continue in his job for another six months before departing. Very mature news. Sony has launched a website called Yay Buttons Yay, that explains buttons. why buttons, specifically the buttons which are found on the upcoming PlayStation Move controller, make for a better gaming experience. Yay Buttons includes an image of the PlayStation Move controller. People can click the buttons on the device to see why Sony believes that they are necessary in motion gaming. The Connect, never really mentioned by name, but, well. We know. Yeah. yeah. We know what they're talking about. Yeah. yeah. See, Apple? Yay, Yay Buttons! buttons. <clears throat> That's you, Steve. So Microsoft, he's, uh, Microsoft's urged Windows users to block attacks against Adobe Acrobat by deploying the Microsoft Enterprise tool, the Enhanced Mitigation Experience Toolkit. Deploy the Emmet! 
<laughs> Deploying the Emmet, uh, which would thwart attacks targeting reader and acrobat. Semantics suggests that people exploiting this vulnerability may be the Aurora group responsible for attacks on Google late last year. Yay, buttons! <laughs> 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 Deploying the experience toolkit. Deploy the Emmet. It's Yay, the Aurora buttons. group. Now that's interesting. That if this was, if this ended up being the uh, the Aurora folks on the, this is a different vulnerability than they hear you that have. It's Microsoft patching Adobe's stuff. Well, that is kind of sad because it's exploiting their operating system. Yeah. Uh, finally, a study out says that gamers make faster decisions than non-gamers. This is going to be released in the current Biology Journal. Uh, attempts to explain how these video games can produce such wide-ranging improvements. Uh, not, not only did they test gamers to find out their reactions, but they also took people and had them play games, although they had never played games before. Because they wanted to find out if it's just that it's kind of self-selecting, like, oh, if I'm good at making decisions, I like to play video games, because that tests the same, same thing. Uh, so let me, let me find this. Uh, they tested 11 men who reported having played action video games at least five times a week, uh, and 12 men who reported no action video game activity. Uh, and then they, uh, they found that the folks who had never played games before... Oh, I'm sorry, I, I got the wrong state. That was the first part of the study. So then the, to, to kind of counteract the bias of people who knew how to play games, they randomly assigned seven men and seven women to play two action video games for a total of 50 hours with no more than two hours of play per day. Another four men and seven women followed the same rules but played a video game that involved directing the lives of a simulated character. So they Sim played City. The Sims. None of the participants had reported having played video games of any type in the previous year. Both groups showed marked improvement in game playing skills after completing the assignment, but the action gamers responded markedly faster to the tests than did the group that played the simulation game. And the test was essentially a bunch of dots are moving around and you have to decide which direction the majority of the dots are moving the fastest. I mean, well, yeah. are, we, are we really surprised by the findings here? I mean, it's kind of like uh, if you wanted to liken it to physical activity, golf versus tennis, you yeah. know, where you, you just get good at, at being on the ball. When you're playing Instagib, that railgun is one shot. So you don't have a second choice. You've got to decide instantly when he hits the jump pad at the apex of his, you know, when, he, when you're going to zap him. But there, there be, there's been a lot of controversy in this arena about whether playing games actually made you better in general or whether it just made you better at the game, whether well, this would right. translate this somewhere else. This isn't suggesting that they're making better decisions. It's just suggesting that they're making faster these decisions faster. Decisions, yeah. exactly. That's true. So, and so, that could even be worse you, if you make the wrong well, decision. But they're fast faster. and accurate. They're not, they're not decisions of semantics. It's like, which way are the, which way are the dots going? That way. So, it's so not they like, have to make an accurate decision. So it's not like if I, if it's just I not quizzed really, you as a gamer, like, are you uh, going to make me a sandwich next Monday? Or, you know, which, which baby do you <laughs> throw out of the boat to save us all? It's not those, those kinds of <laughs> yeah. high-level decisions. It's very simple decisions. But Pseudo, they do have to be accurate. you make me a sandwich next Monday? Yes, well, I will. Well, so it's good news for people who play... Uh, these kinds of, I mean, Playing games you know, makes you faster. Mind exercises. Exactly. Not a waste after all. On to the calendar. On to the calendar. Target is rumored to sell Apple's iPad in stores starting on to the calendar. 1 October 3rd. That's pretty fun. Yeah, well, this is the they're making enough iPads now that they can actually stock them in right. retail stores. So if you want an iPad um, in October, uh, less than a month away, you might be able to pick one up at Target. Speaking of iPads... The iPad is headed to China this Friday. Oh, I hope he'll send us an, a postcard. Yeah, I know. Postcard. Good luck in China Friday, Have fun, iPad. iPad. Uh, Super Mario Brothers reaches the ripe old age of 25. Happy birthday, Mario and Luigi. He can finally get cheaper so insurance on his Mario Kart. You guys looked over 25 to begin with. They're older than that. Uh, Boxy Box ditches NVIDIA's Tegra 2 for Intel CE4100. Pre-orders start today at $229. So it doesn't look like it'll be less than $200, which they had been hoping. But maybe there'll still be a discount later. Who knows? And a report says Samsung is planning Galaxy Tab US event this Thursday. What could it mean? What does it mean? Not a double event. Just one event. Just the single. There is a Samsung event this Thursday, and it has to do with an Android device, so we're all guessing, like, well, what else could it be? Come on. It has to be the Galaxy Tab. On to the voicemails. 260-TNT-SHOW is the phone number to call if you would like to have your voicemail listened to, and we play a selection of them on the show, like this first caller, who has an important reminder for us. 
Hey, this is Kevin. I just have a quick question for everyone there, and that is, it's been a couple weeks. Are you guys using Ping, or do you see anything out of this, or it, it going anywhere? Because it seems like yeah. it's kind of just sitting there. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Ping. Bye. Right. Yeah, I signed up hey, for Ping Kevin, the right? first day, Kevin. Okay, I get it. Uh, and uh, I never went back. I forgot to think about Ping. Yeah. I'm still waiting Til for now. it to hit the Debian repositories. Yeah. Michael started following Phil Collins. Oh. I just found out. Wow. Yeah. And I forgot about Phil Collins, Scott too. Scott posted a song, Spanish Bombs by The Clash. Good song. It is good but song, But you don't get Scott. to listen to it. You just get the 30-second preview, right? Yeah. Uh. Unless you have it, which I don't. But I could buy it. Well, hey. For 99 cents. I mean, it certainly doesn't mean people aren't enjoying Ping, but none, none of us are using it regularly. I don't think, I don't think people are enjoying Ping know, all that much. It seems like I'm one of those sure. things. It's just one of those a lot pings. of people want to talk about it for a day or so. And yeah. Next thing you know, we're all blocking. I still like the idea seven. of it. I think there maybe maybe they should treat it as a hobby. For a maybe. Uh, our next caller has a funny story from Nashua, New Hampshire, because we had that story on uh, last week about the Facebook robbers. Hello, Tom and co-host. This is Katie calling from Nashua, New Hampshire. And I just finished hearing about the uh, location services on on Facebook um, causing criminal activity in the Nashua area. And I thought it was pretty funny. Um, there was recently another crime circle in Nashua where criminals were roaming the streets and breaking into cars of people that were home and stealing gadgets such as MP3 players, cell phones, and GPS devices. So I guess damned if you stay home, damned if you go out, those criminals in Nashua will get you one way or another. Bye. Wow, that that makes Nashua sound like worse than Anacostia, <laughs> like DC, or Evil. Detroit. So wait a second. If I'm you understanding Katie right, she's okay. saying that not only are people waiting till you Richmond. check into the movie theater on Facebook places to prove that you're not home, and then getting robbed. But if you check in at home, you look at Facebook play. Oh, he's home. Let's that get their means car. you're not in your car, yeah. and if you're not, you know, in a padlock garage or something, and you happen to leave all your electronics in your car, then they might go walking away. I was a little skeptical of this story, and I'm glad that uh, CNET's Caroline McCarthy uh, reported that Facebook confirmed with the Nashua police that while they have an ongoing investigation and have made a number of arrests, the only Facebook link was that one of those arrested had a Facebook friend who posted about leaving town in the near future, and it had nothing to do with Facebook places. So our first supposition, it was a friend, is right. And second of all, it didn't even have to do with places. It just had to do with, like, a posting saying, off to my vacation, right. rob right. my it's house It's the same now. thing as saying, hey, friend, I'm going to go to... right. I don't know, somewhere outside of New Hampshire. And and wouldn't you Won't even be have around. to be wouldn't you have to be friends with the robbers for them to know that you were checking in somewhere else? That's what I always so thought. So stop yeah. friending robbers. Yeah, stop friending robbers. Yes. Is and don't open attachments. There Those you go. are the two she things you need to know. Wisely. And don't leave your MP3 player in your car. Yeah. See, that's advice you can use. <laughs> News that you can use to live a better life. On to the emails to TNT at twit.tv. Uh, Carol, the RN in Denver, Colorado, responding to our EMS guy who's like, well, if you can Twitter, you can drive yourself to the hospital. She says, well, I agree that it is annoying to have someone on the cell phone while I'm admitting them to the intensive care unit. Don't do that, people. The reason the news tells you to call 911 when you have chest pain is that your chance of having an arrhythmia that can render you unconscious goes up exponentially while you're having a heart attack. People often don't feel awful, especially after treatment when having a heart attack, but I don't want to discourage them from calling 911. So thank you, Carol, for uh, for that good advice. When in doubt, call the emergency line. Right. We definitely don't want to discourage people from calling 911 if they might actually be yeah. having a really bad issue. Exactly. Now, Suzanne wrote in after seeing a recent XKCD comic that you all must see. Yes, you uh, must watch and it. When she had an epiphany, it. she said, just made me realize that you wouldn't need to hack into anything to get passwords and usernames. You could create an app that requires a username and password and email address. People would just hand them over to you. Who would ever create such a thing? Twitter, com. Don't go there. Go there. Don't put any information in there. You can go there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So XKCD is, is in today's XKCD at xkcd.com slash 792 uh, deals with the idea that you can create any kind of web app and people will give a login. Yeah, they'll for reuse it. passwords. They'll reuse passwords and then you just create a bot that goes out and tries these logins and passwords and you'll end up 
right, rank it in, you know, a couple tens of thousands of, of hits that work on PayPal and all this. So why and then you, you can take over the something earth. something like KeyPass every time you generate a unique password for a site or at least use something within the domain name or something within the who is record that's not going to change so that you can formulate a unique password every time. Now, the other part of this cartoon points out that there we the study we talked about on Current Geek last Friday that you only need to make about $75,000 on average to be happy. So he's like, well, once I get this password working and I, I don't really need to steal any money because it won't make me any happier. <laughs> and, then it, and then it goes on to some hilarious speculation about what actually goes on in Google because they're in that Turns same out boat. being evil is hard. Yeah, because it's not as easy rich, as you think. Yeah, unless yeah. you have a political Isn't or $75,000 only in certain cities, though? I think in New York you have well, to make about 160000 Exactly. It's $75,000 on average. So, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be higher in New York. It's going to be cheaper in Chattanooga. Yeah. Yeah, but you get all that bandwidth. Yeah, yeah. That's, so that's going to make you happy. I Seriously, I think we ought to think about this. Tennessee. Quit Cottage, nice Chattanooga. One gig all over the place. Yeah. No more Skype problems think for us. Think of our mortgage payments. I know. We'd, we'd I make mean, it. We'd have to, pay for, we'd have to pay for that Francisco. fiber thing, mm -hmm. but yeah, right, we could probably yeah. save it. It probably make it make it worthwhile. I think so. Chattanooga, here we come. Road trip. Choo choo. We're not leaving. Thanks everybody for watching TNT, and uh, thank you, Darren Kitchen, for being on every Monday. Thank you for having me. Having a blast. And uh, you can find us on the web at twit.tv slash TNT. You can email us TNT at twit.tv, and you can call us. Please do. 260 TNT Show. We'd love to hear from you. Do keep your voicemails around 30 seconds if you want to get played on the show. We'll talk to you later.